teamers. Great to see all of you around the world. And thanks for joining our webcast today. We've got a couple of exciting updates. I'm joined today by Kyle Milady, and we've got a couple of videos also. I'm gonna start with my openings and Jeremy and our team have a couple of videos that we'll play here in a minute. Um, but I wanna just give an update to some things that I know are on a lot of our employees' minds. We see every day in the news, uh, various countries around the world, as well as states here in the United States, really wrestling with this question of how long to leave their emergency orders and their shelter in place provisions in place. And that has a big influence on when and how we think about our operations. So I just wanna share a couple of points with our V-teamers, since I know this is top of mind, how does this apply to all of you? So first, we want you to know we're monitoring this on a daily basis. We have multiple meetings a day with our command center that's monitoring news feeds and what's happening around the world. Second, every day Hans and the VLC come together, look at that information and look at what makes sense for us uh, for how we're operating Verizon. And then third, uh, Joe Russo and I, who have talked to you about our command center process, review this information and continuously tweak with the top 30 operating leaders in the company, how we're running the various operations you've heard about. So what we want you to know is we're hard at work on understanding what that's gonna mean for us. And we've said before that we wanna take it till the end of April to decide that. So we'll be back next week with how we plan on moving from here as Verizon. What you do know is we've got our work from home protocols throughout most parts of the company. And then for our employees that are still working outside the home in retail, we've put in touchless retail and we will be continuing to take measures to bring more of our retail stores back online now that we have these touchless retail protocols in place. And you'll hear from Kyle in a moment how we continue to innovate in ways that we're servicing our customers with dispatch and installations and repairs in a way with the Texi app that's allowing us to do that with um, in new and unique ways. So stay tuned. We know it's top of mind for all of you. The webpage always has our updated information. Another thing I wanted to highlight today, and I'll throw it back to Jeremy after that, is it's Earth Day. So hopefully everybody around the world is uh, having a chance to take a time out and think about Earth Day. It's actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And I'm sure not how uh, the originators of Earth Day planned on having Earth Day be celebrated. Uh, there are probably a lot of events organized that have been repurposed and probably being celebrated in a virtual way, which you can see in these photos. It's very exciting. And we wanna just share, this is a really big important priority for Verizon in our focus on the climate and our social responsibility commitments. So we just wanna give a shout out. Uh, we've got National Volunteer Week that we've made a global focus for Verizon and it's Earth Day. And so please go check out the volunteer webpage and see ways that we as V-teamers can donate our time and our capabilities to help around the world. And finally, uh, it's Administrative Professional Day. So I wanna give a shout out to Lisa Baxter, who's my partner and helps keep the HR team and uh, my office running as efficiently as possible. She's been a great partner to me since I joined Verizon last year. And I'm sure many of you have a colleague out there supporting you as an administrative professional. So don't forget to give them a shout out today. So with that, I'm going to go back to Jeremy. Awesome. Christy, thank you so much for that update. And yeah, shout out to all of our uh, uh, assistants out there who who help us keep the business running. And you see them here from a different angle, uh, technical difficulties on my, my other system. So uh, as we're here from Kyle, you know, we always have redundancies in our network. So that's what I'm doing over here today. So I uh, want to bounce off uh, what you said about Earth Day. You know, we're making a lot of contributions. Chris, let's go and show that tweet uh, that, you know, we are contributing now, um, uh, not just uh, with our people, but we're also going to help uh, and uh, planting 500,000 trees and the the uh, reforest efforts and a lot of things that are going on also throughout the month for anybody who signs up for a uh, an, an activity related to uh, Earth Day or Earth Month. We are uh, planting trees for that and also partnering with the NFL with the draft coming up. We're going to be planting some trees for that as well. So a lot of good things happening there. Now, before we get to Kyle, uh, this morning on live with uh, Kelly and Ryan, uh, one of our, our techs or one of our managers uh, out of the city, uh, Scott, was highlighted again. We've highlighted him here before for all of his efforts uh, as a hero of the day. But they did the same thing today, and I just want to play a, a part of that clip for you right now. 
But right now, we have one of our heroes, our next hardworking hero, hails from New York City, is working 24-7, as so many people are around the clock, to keep us connected with our family, with our friends, with our colleagues. He's an area manager of field operations for Verizon. Let us meet Scott Kisthart. Scott, good morning. And first off, thank you. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing really good, thanks. If this kind of thing would have happened 10, 12, 15 years ago, we would have been in a real different scenario without the kind of communication even like this that we've got now. So that connection is that you're providing is really all that people have right now. Do they? I'm sure they're grateful and they acknowledge how important it is while they can't be with their friends and family. Oh yeah, every day I get commendation letters about uh, how hard we're working out there and how grateful people are when we come to their apartments, get them reconnected so they can use their all their apps again, use their, you know, home, everybody's homeschooling now too, for the most part in New York. The connection's vital. There's no way to get through a day without it. And I'm so proud that I'm part of a team who delivers this every day. We really appreciate what you and your team of 110 technicians are doing to keep us connected. It is just, it's getting us through, brother. It's getting us through. So thank you. Take care of yourself. Take care of your team. And we'll be thinking about you. All right, thank you. I just want to say hello to my uh, family out there. Jen, Chloe, and Ryan on the other side of the apartment. I love you all. Here's what's great about Scott. He, who knows what his panic and stress level is. I am assuming it's tremendous, but we would never know it. Did you see the calm demeanor that totally he calm. exhibits? Yes, totally calm. that is, that's a sign of a great leader. This calm demeanor that he is exhibiting, at least, you know, publicly. <laughs> Uh, how about that? And way to go, Scott. And thanks to all of our teams out there who are who are making it happen on a on a daily basis. To mention though, Scott, uh, he mentioned his wife there. She's also a nurse practitioner, so he's doing the homeschooling thing, keeping you know the whole family's keeping the the family going there. So great to to see that. So brings me to uh, my next guest of the day, Mr. Kyle Malady, who uh, is the leader of our uh, global network and technology team. Kyle, good afternoon. How are things with you and the team today? Very good, Jeremy. Today's an exciting day for us, and I'll get to that a, a little later. Thanks for also showing that clip of Scott there. That, I didn't get a chance to see that. That was really pretty cool. Uh, he did a fantastic job there representing uh, all of us here in, uh, in Verizon. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about where the network stands. You know, as Hans, Hans has been telling all you guys over the last uh, couple weeks, um, you know, the network has kind of reached a uh, kind of a stability point um, and kind of this new normal, if you will. So the usage patterns we're seeing are pretty, um, um, you know, they, they seem to reach the leveling off point. We still obviously have certain hotspots around the networks, whether it be in our landline and Fios, whether it be in the, the, um, the enterprise networks or in wireless that the teams are uh, rallying around to try and shore up. Obviously, we get a lot of requests every single day from either governments uh, looking to do something new, whether it be they want to fire up a, a new 311 uh, application or they want to help support something in the government or for hospitals. We get those calls on a daily basis and we respond on a daily basis, just as you saw Scott uh, talk about there. So um, we continue to work on that, but we also continue to engineer and think about what's going to come from here. Obviously, when um, all this started occurring, uh, you know, it happened pretty quickly. Uh, we saw a usage trends happen over just a couple, a matter of a few days. Um, we don't think it's going to come back like that right away. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a new way of how the world operates and how um, businesses come back and people come back into society. Christy and her team and Joe are, are, are really working on trying to figure out how that's going to be. So for us, we know. It's not going to be one big bang and everybody comes back on a single day. It's going to get feathered in. That's going to happen across the United States, and that's going to have a different impact on our network. So we're trying to get ahead of that, uh, that right now. But um, everything's uh, working, working well at the moment. I'm always looking at stats. So I thought I'd bring a couple stats to the table today. Uh, today I want to talk about some wireless apps. So the interesting news there is uh, YouTube is actually, if you look at all the wireless usage in a network, YouTube is the application that is used the most, followed closely by Facebook, and then followed by Instagram. But I find what's interesting is um, an application called TikTok has been uh, growing quite a bit over the, the, the last few weeks. 
I frankly didn't know what TikTok was until I saw my girls dancing around in the living room here one day and they told me what it was. And now I see it's picked up and now it's number four on the list. So whatever, you know, who's ever using TikTok, I guess you do dances and whatnot. That's pretty interesting. A um, couple other things that I'd say, I wanna shout out to the, uh, you know, the team, especially down South. Over the last couple of weeks, we've had to deal with a lot of weather. You know, April brings quite a bit of weather, especially down South, there's tornadoes. Um, as a matter of fact, even in New Jersey yesterday, there was a, a tornado down in, in Tom's River. So there's been some bad weather over the past couple of weeks. I'm pleased to report that our, our networks have held up well. Uh, a lot of our sites have either been on generator or backup battery, uh, but the teams have been out there and been all over it. And so we could provide, uh, you know, service the best we can during these, uh, during these uh, weather events. Um, also a big shout out to the, the IT GTS teams. They continue to do a fantastic job making sure people can work from home. Uh, just coming up with new ways to, to do their work, to make sure we can all stay connected. And, you know, we can have uh, conferences like this with uh, 30,000 people on it. So they continue to overcome uh, interesting daily challenges. And so so big shout out to them. They continue to do well. But the other thing I'm really happy about, Jeremy, is I guess we continue to walk and chew gum. So... We're dealing with all these curveballs that come at us in the in the network. Um, our teams step up. That's just what they do with the calm demeanor that you saw Scott portray there in the uh, in the, um, the the little piece. Uh, but you know what? There's a lot of people continuing to plan and work on new features, uh, new code for systems, uh, network planning. What are the new things we're doing and working with our vendors so we can continue. Uh, the technology drum beat with 5G and other products and services we go in. And you just saw, you know, making uh, that Blue Jeans announcement, that Blue Jean acquisition. So the, there's a ton going on in BEAU, which is so important so we can keep the business moving in, uh, you know, according to the plans we had before all this uh, uh, COVID set in. Now, finally, what I'm really excited about today is the first day we are starting to roll out something called Pios in a Box. And this just goes to the innovation and the can-do attitude from, from the V team. Um, as you know, uh, as a result of the, the virus, we are not going into homes to, uh, to set up service anymore for Fios. But th that didn't stop the creative folks in Kevin Services team and in planning and other teams. These folks figured out a way that we can still get critical services to people so they can, uh, uh, they can be connected. Because who, you know, who knew? People are still moving. Um, homes are getting closed and people are still moving and other things are happening. So um, I think you'll see in this next piece here, the creativity really and innovation really shows through for the V team. So let, let's roll that, Jeremy. Because of COVID-19, we're changing the way we serve our customers. Fios in a Box is a solution Verizon has come up with to install a customer's Fios service without actually entering into the home. I have my components here. We're going to take the ONT. We're going to place this into the box. We're going to put the set-top box in next. Power unit will be next to the ONT. Next thing we're going to do is get the router in. This is the power unit for the set-top box, power cord for the router. Coax cable, a DIN-to-DIN -din cable. You'll have an Ethernet cord. We're going to have a power strip so that we can plug in all the equipment. Now you have all the elements together inside the box. The box is now ready to be delivered. For this customer today, we're providing a triple play, so telephone, internet and television. So we're laying out crushable fiber that is gonna go into the house for the customer to connect into the Fios in a box. This is the crushable fiber. This fiber has a lot of bend radius in it, so it can be shut in a window without worrying about signal degradation. We can leave this fiber in a location where the customer can grab it, bring it in a window, which is what we did here. We leave the Fios in the box on the doorstep for the customer. Customer can bring it in to the appropriate location. I was able to walk them through the whole process through our TechSee app so that I could see everything that they were doing and they could show me what they were doing. All right, you see a little notch on the top of that? It's by your index finger. My boyfriend and I had put a bid on a house, not knowing we'd be you know, settling in the middle of a pandemic. Both of us are working from home currently. The house had no previous internet, so it was a full install. They made sure they stood there outside and any questions we had, we were able to ask. 
overall, it was pretty seamless. I feel great that I can still help people get connected. I feel like Fios in a Box is a way to keep our customers safe and keep our employees safe. Now that's innovation, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, that and uh, walking and chewing gum at the same uh, same time, Kyle. That uh, two big things I've got to work on there. So uh, yeah, but it's it's great to see that, and I know the teams are working through what that means and the customers that they can serve. Uh, obviously, not not rushing out to to do all of the the back uh, back orders there, but uh, we'll we'll talk more about that in the coming days. So Kyle, thanks for for that update. Uh, you know, we've also talked that you know we're we're in other parts of business now. We are doing new things, and so uh, right now we're able to announce that uh, there's a new Motorola Edge Plus device, another 5G device that is a coming exclusively to Verizon. Uh, it's a flagship Motorola 5G phone. Uh, I'm not going to try to explain it much more. I'm going to turn it over to my friend George to uh, give us the lowdown and all the deets on it. Hey, I'm George from Verizon, and I'm sheltering in place in my Tiki Lounge, also known as my home office. And today I'm showing off the brand new Motorola Edge Plus. But first, I want to take a second to mark this great moment in time. It was about a year ago, give or take a few weeks, that Verizon unveiled the world's first 5G network. And Motorola was right there with us launching the first 5G upgradable smartphone. Together, we made 5G history. Now Motorola is back with the Edge Plus, and it's built from the ground up for 5G. So let's check out why it's so awesome. Fire up the phone and the first thing you'll see is this amazing 6.7 inch edge to edge display. The waterfall screen lets you see everything in front of you, making it perfect for video chatting friends and family, watching your favorite movies, or working from home. If you're reading a long article, simply double tap the side of the screen and it shrinks to fit the text. You could even use the edge of the phone to slide down notifications and open your most used apps. Flip the phone over and you'll find three cameras, a telephoto, an ultra wide angle, and a macro vision lens. They power the 108 megapixel resolution sensor so you can blow your photos up and hang them on your wall. What's more, the Edge Plus shoots video in 6K so you can see every detail in your video. Motorola also realized that a great mobile experience isn't complete without good audio quality. So they built two large stereo speakers into the Edge Plus to produce the highest output of any Motorola smartphone. This is the phone you use to jam out to your favorite tunes. Under the hood, the Edge Plus is built around Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 processor for easy access to Verizon's 5G ultra wideband network that lets you download presentations and high def movies in seconds. Motorola also included a massive 5,000 milliamp battery with reverse wireless charging that you can watch charge up using the edge of your screen. How cool is that? The Motorola Edge Plus will be available exclusively from Verizon starting May 14th for $41.66 a month on Verizon device payment or $999.99 retail. Check out verizonwireless.com for more promos and additional details. All right, how about that? I also need George to come over and give my uh, my basement a makeover uh, to the, the Tiki Lounge uh, there. I know he's getting some feedback about that right now, but good to see that. Another new device uh, coming in uh, for the 5G network. And Kyle, we're talking about uh, seeing more devices. We're just beyond a month uh, or a year rather of uh, launching the, the world's first 5G network. How are the teams still making that work happen uh, out in the field today? Oh yeah, so there's a couple different things. So in terms of building the network, um, you know, our, our engineers, our techs, um, they're all out there and the folks working with municipalities, uh, we're still building as fast as we possibly can. Uh, certainly we find some towns, um, you know, they may have furloughed some of their, the folks who work there, maybe in a permitting office. So we run into some challenges, but we actually try and work with those folks and help them to make sure we can still get permits. Uh, we're still, you know, being really safe and we're still building. Uh, the networks as much as we can. Some places are a little slower than others, but we continue to really move and continue to build and find ways to uh, to continue to do that. So we have that piece going. On the other hand, we continue to work on the technology. People can still code from home and we can still test devices and we can still test features and um, because of because of the network. And we continue to do that. So we continue to push the envelope on the technology of 5G and um, as new devices come out, you'll start seeing new capabilities uh, from both the devices and the network. So we just keep rolling, man. That's what we're gonna keep doing. 
Good, good, good to know that. Uh, Christy, before we go to you for final thoughts, uh, a lot of folks are now kind of in that mindset of, hey, what happens next? Where are we going from this? What are some of the things that you've seen that stand out as best practices so far that you think will continue into the future? I would say we continue to see fabulous examples of our V-teamers creating innovative ways to do our jobs and to stay connected with our customers and keep the networks up and running. I think we've learned a lot about uh, virtual meetings and how to stay connected with people that aren't present in the same building. And that was actually one of the goals we had around Verizon 2.0, which was really embracing all of the uh, locations and the talent that we had around the world. And there was some consternation about, did everybody have to transfer to the same location to advance their careers? So I think for one, uh, this has shown us that we can stay connected and do a lot of work with uh, distributed and virtual teams. So I think that'll be something that we carry with us as we think about talent pools and development and career opportunities. And I think our V-teamers are excited about that. I think another is how we've been able to reimagine supporting our customers and doing solution support, telesales, customer follow-up uh, remotely, or even in advance of a visit to the store. And we are hoping to gather all the customer feedback from that and continue to roll that into our strategy of making sure our customers have the best experience ever when they not only are on the best network in the world, but also get the best employee and customer experience with that. And we see a lot of exciting learnings there. And then I finally would just say, the other things I think we're seeing are, you know, more um, expanse around helping people figure out how to balance all the things in their personal life and their work life. And I think as a society, over the last decade, we've really struggled with that. And this has put us into a new level of having to confront that head on and develop uh, all kinds of new tools for dealing with that. And I think that's kind of exciting and we'll have all of that to keep going with because we think that'll be a way that also differentiates the employee experience and our customer experience here with Verizon. And I loved the examples that Kyle was able to cite in the way his folks have innovated as well. That's great, great. Any other final thoughts as we're wrapping up today's episode, Christy? I think it's a big week for Verizon. I know we've got earnings at the end of the week and we'll hear from Hans and from Matt. And I know you'll tell us about all the exciting things we have going on for tomorrow. And it's Earth Day and Administrative Support Day and it's volunteer week around the world for Verizon. And so lots of reasons to reach out to friends, colleagues, coworkers, and just take a moment to say thanks or reflect on something that makes you happy. Yeah, good. A great reminder there to uh, reach out and remind people of that. Uh, a couple of things uh, coming up today and tonight. Uh, Chris, if you want to go and take those slides first, uh, at 1 p.m. today, Eastern, on uh, the Verizon News Instagram channel, you can hear from uh, Andy Surer, who is the editor-in-chief for Yahoo Finance, talking about trust and influence uh, in this era of COVID-19. Uh, and then at 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, head over and follow Verizon Business on LinkedIn. Uh, this is a great opportunity to hear from uh, Tammy Irwin, who leads the business team, as well as the leader of the Blue Jeans team, uh, as, as we made that announcement last week, that starts at 2 p.m. today on LinkedIn. And then, of course, tonight, the big show, Pay It Forward, uh, was moved to tonight uh, to work around the NFL draft of tomorrow night. Uh, Billie Eilish and Phineas are performing a special Wednesday edition, Pay It Forward Live, uh, as they're supporting small businesses 8 p.m. Eastern uh, on uh Verizon's Twitter. So a lot of good things there to uh, to watch and to, to make sure you, you tune into. And Kyle, about TikTok, I'm going to take the, the hit on the TikTok. Uh, that's uh, my wife and I. Stop watching TV now. We're watching TikTok every night to get some laughs. It's not all dancing and singing, my friend. Okay. Uh, but there's a, a lot of other good stuff in there uh, as well. So I uh, appreciate everyone tuning in today. As we've done all week, I want to end with a, a nice message from one of the, the groups we're helping through all of our volunteer efforts, not only during volunteer week, but around the uh, around the calendar year. Uh, SciStart is a longstanding partner of Verizon uh, that connects employee, employees to citizen science projects, working with real scientists, uh, and they want to say thank you for all the work that our volunteers have done. So have a look at that. We'll be back with you again tomorrow at noon Eastern. People of all ages, skills, interests, backgrounds, and locations, really anyone who is curious or concerned about the world around them can make an impact through Citizen Science and SciStarter. Recently, three COVID-19 project scientists joined us online and engaged Verizon volunteers 
in their online projects to help fight against the virus. We get to watch in real time as scientists and regular people, all you awesome volunteers, connect and collaborate in ways that just would not be possible without digital connections. Our work with volunteers has given us comfort and purpose in these uncertain times. Verizon volunteers, we thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. We see that you've participated in projects that need your help. Your data has mattered to scientists. Your passion, your insights, your curiosity and commitment is helping us move the world forward together.